Please welcome your City of Los Angeles Council Members, City Attorney and City Controller. rise for our national anthem as performed by Jacqueline Herrera, a student at Fauché Learning Center. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the by Rabbi Sarah Ronsky, Pastor Charles Blake, and Umar Hakim Day. Please be seated. Good evening. It is an honor to be gathered in this space with our Honorable Mayor Karen Bass, city council members, clergy of multiple faiths, and a vast array of dedicated Los Angeles leaders and citizens. This evening, I hold in my heart the words of the prophet Jeremiah, who implored that we offer praise to the source of all when we seek the welfare of the city and pray on its behalf for its prosperity and all of its inhabitants. And so as Jeremiah instructed, I pray, I pray our God, God of our ancestors, source of life and power, May you bless and protect our leaders of this beautiful, flourishing city, which is simultaneously deeply challenged. Hold tightly to us and spread your shelter of safety and security over all. God, grant our leaders, and especially our devoted mayor, the strength to continue as has been done so courageously this past year. Grant her and all of our leaders the strength to continue to pursue innovative solutions the mental fortitude to hold fast to a clear vision, and the creative mindset to allow the imagination to soar, increasing the light over our city and each of its inhabitants, shining light on solutions and breaking down barriers. 
May we hear your message, God, your words of Deuteronomy, justice, justice shall you pursue, and let it serve as a guide for our leadership and the work that they do to solve the complex issues that threaten our community. And sovereign of the universe, we all recognize these are most certainly turbulent times, divisive times, locally, nationally, and globally. We see this tension in our homes, on our streets, and even within this very room between one another. The tensions are real. We turn to you and we pray that you may guide us this evening and in the days ahead to remember that we are created in your divine image. We are so much more alike than we are different. Skin, race, religion, gender identity, political party, this is a part of us. It is not the whole human being and not the source for discord. Each person created holy in your image is holy. May your presence remind us that while we may have ideas that seem at odds with one another, this does not mean that people should be at odds with one another. Ideas that battle, not people who battle. And I pray that we may build upon Mayor Bass's legacy of inclusivity lifting up the fallen and embracing all. May we expand upon her vision in the year ahead with justice, truth, and harmony resounding from every street corner, alleyway, every home, and office alike. O say shalom bin ramav, uya say shalom alenu, biamru, amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us all, amen. If it is all the same with you at West Angeles, we usually stand when we pray. So can I please invite you to rest on your feet? And please, everyone, bow your heads and close your eyes for this prayer. Dear Lord, creator of all, we thank you for this day. We want to thank you for this city blessed with so much beauty and uniqueness. We thank you that even though you have all power, you have allowed us to partner with you for the building of your kingdom, the building of a better world, to come against hopeless and despair. We thank you that you have put something beautiful in all of us, that you have put purpose and greatness in all of us, and that we know that none of us are stronger than all of us. We thank you that if we come together in love and unity, then there is nothing that we will not be able to accomplish in your name. We thank you that you've given us leaders that have a heart to serve the people of this beautiful city. Please continue to guide them with all of the wisdom necessary to do what you have called them to do in your will, and we will all be blessed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Assalamu alaikum. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship, worship except Allah, Allah being a proper Arabic word for God. And I bear witness that Muhammad, may the peace and blessings be upon him, is the messenger of God. I'll be coming from the Holy Quran, which is the, which is the book of Islam, and the first chapter is called Al-Fatiha, which is the opening, and it's the seven most oft-repeated words in the world. Words in the world. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the benef the most gracious, the most merciful. Master of the dead judgment. Thee alone we worship, thee alone we ask for help. Show us the straight path, the path of those who has earned your favor, and not the path of those who have earned your anger or who have went astray. These words the Muslim recite in the five daily prayers every day, and it's also known as the most repeated words, words in the world. Now, in today's time, we are 
in a dire need for multi-faith solidarity. As a believer in Abraham, um, the next verse I'm gonna read follows in that suit. The same religion has the most high established for you is as that which he enjoined on Noah, the which we have sent by inspiration to thee, and that we have enjoined on Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, son of Mary, namely that you should remain steadfast in religion, make no divisions to those who worship other things than the most high, hard is the way the creator chooses to himself those who, those who he pleases and guides to himself those who turn to him. This is something that is found throughout the Quran about multi-faith solidarity because I follow Abraham as well as the last messenger and may, um, may, may the God is the, may the creator bless this council with health, security, and protection. May this council guard the human security of all Angelinos. For God is the forgiver. He loves and forgives. And may he bless this whole audience and those who are watching again with health, security, and protection. Thank you. Please welcome Council President Paul Krikorian. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of all of the members of the Los Angeles City Council, uh, with whom I am so proud to serve, it's my great honor to welcome you to the John Ferraro Council Chambers here in Los Angeles City Hall. Tonight, of course, we're gathered for the mayor's State of the City Address, but before we proceed, I'd like to take just a moment to acknowledge a tragic loss that our city suffered just this morning. Jacob Fuerte, a 22-year-old recruit in training at the Los Angeles Fire Department, lost his life while coming to the aid of the injured at a freeway collision. Jacob had made a commitment to a life of service and he was on his way to the Training Academy drill tower when he saw people in grave need. With the kind of selfless heroism that we see so often from our first responders, Jacob immediately sprang into action to come to their aid at great risk to himself, and that decision cost him his life. On behalf of the city of Los Angeles, we extend our deepest sympathy to Jacob's family and loved ones, to his recruit class, and to all of the men and women of the Los Angeles Fire Department. I ask everyone to join us now in a moment of silent reflection in memory of Jacob Fuerte and in honor of his extraordinary example of service. Thank you. Jacob Fuerte was one of the tens of thousands of city employees who have dedicated their lives and their careers to service to others. Many routinely risk their lives and all make sacrifices to serve the people of Los Angeles. Every one of them deserves the profound respect and appreciation of all of us in city government and all of the people that we collectively serve. We speak of them as a city family. And like any other family, sometimes we face challenges and difficulties, and sometimes we may even disagree from time to time. But in the end, we know that we need to pull together to collaborate and to find common purpose in order for this city to thrive. In my years in public office, no one has set a better example of that kind of partnership and team spirit than the 43rd mayor of the city of Los Angeles, the Honorable Karen Bass. When she addressed us here for the first time last year, our city was still reeling in the aftermath of the overlapping blows of pandemic, economic collapse, scandal, and political divisiveness. Today, we're seeing a new and more effective approach to meeting our city's needs through the mayor's leadership and partnership. 
Now, obviously, the city's leaders will still have disagreements about the best approaches for addressing our great challenges and building a better future. And there's nothing wrong with that. But together, we're building a culture of cooperation at City Hall with the mayor and the council doing our best to lock arms, not point fingers, to focus on accomplishments, not aggrandizement. I'm hopeful that the days of unnecessary conflict and pointless confrontation in City Hall are behind us. Now tonight is the last time that I'll be welcoming our mayor for a State of the City address, uh, but I'm confident that my council colleagues and our successors will continue the kind of creative collaboration and positive give and take with the mayor that will produce the kind of accomplishments that the people of our city so deserve. In the year ahead, this city is going to continue to face formidable challenges. Difficult choices will require our collective imagination and courage. But those are two resources that the people of Los Angeles have never run short of. So if we continue to work together, there are no challenges that we can't overcome. So many of the serious difficulties that our community faces, housing, income disparity, mental health challenges, crime, climate change, many of these are issues that extend far beyond our city's limits. And solutions to those challenges will also require the close cooperation of every level of government. Fortunately, the mayor's collaborative approach has produced much closer integration of leadership, not only here within City Hall, but also between the city and other bodies of government. In my time here, there has never been a stronger relationship between our city and the County Board of Supervisors than what we enjoy now. In the current chair of the board, together with her colleagues, we are fortunate to have a partner that recognizes both the urgency and the extraordinary opportunity of this moment. So it gives me tremendous pleasure to welcome to our chambers the chair of the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, the Honorable Lindsay Horvath. Thank you so much for that warm introduction, President Krikorian. And while this may be your last introduction of the mayor, we know you'll never be a stranger to Los Angeles. It's an honor to join you all tonight for the 2024 State of the City. I'm joined by my colleague on the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors from the Super Second District, the one and only Supervisor Holly Mitchell. And I know our whole board is thrilled to be in partnership with the city. A little more than a year ago, Mayor Bass and I were sworn into our roles at a consequential time in our shared Los Angeles history. Communities across our region were demanding a new way forward, a homelessness crisis that led us both to declare local emergencies, a transportation system at a critical moment of expansion to transform, connect, and decarbonize our region. Olympic and Paralympic Games on the horizon, and a powerful opportunity to share, the world, share with the world exactly who Los Angeles is. It's going to take all of us to bring Los Angeles into a new era. Since our first meeting, our conversations have always centered around the city and the county working together. Locking arms in a commitment to lasting solutions and greater accountability to the public we serve. Inviting more community members in to help solve our challenges. Slashing bureaucracy to fast track results for the communities that need it most. This is a new day. Instead of finger pointing, we're practicing collaboration at a scale that has been unheard of between the city and county. And when I say county, I mean the whole county. Very soon after taking office, Mayor Bass invited me and all of the mayors of my district to her home for dinner. And she did the same with all of my colleagues on the board and every other city mayor in Los Angeles County. 
Los Angeles has a mayor who leads by example, who leans in with a spirit of unity to solve problems in real time. And while people are hurting and in need of healing, that is so important in this moment. A woman who demonstrates through her actions how essential city and county alignment is to meeting the needs of our communities, who is committed to meeting this moment. Mayor Bass has leveraged the combined power of our seats and our partners on the city council to do things differently, to lead with transparency and accountability, and to deliver results for our communities. One year later, we've turned commitment into action. Mayor Bass now chairs the Metro Board, and we both appointed ourselves to the LASA Commission because we agree that more accountability is essential to solving the humanitarian crisis of homelessness, the city and the county together. This is the power of unity. This is the power of female leadership. It's no surprise that Los Angeles turned to women to lead in this moment. When our humanity is at stake, it is women who will lead us forward. When our rights are under attack, it is women who will fight back. I hear some agreement here today, that's great. The All Women Board of Supervisors and I are united with you, Mayor Bass, in tackling our challenges and lifting up the Los Angeles we all love. Tonight, we recommit to locking arms and moving forward with bold leadership to realize the dreams of Los Angeles. It is now my distinct honor to welcome my partner in getting things done, the one and only Mayor Karen Bass. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Madam City Attorney, Mr. City Controller, thank you, and Madam Chair of the County Board of Supervisors for that introduction. How was that introduction, huh? Thank you. Thank you so much. I have to say, it is exciting to think about just how far the relationship between the city and the county has come in just one short year. We've put aside the finger pointing and instead we've gotten to work because that's what the people of Los Angeles deserve. <laughs> President Krikorian, thank you for welcoming us into these chambers. For decades, you have served with distinction and with a deep dedication. It was an honor for me to serve with you in Sacramento, and it has been an honor to serve with you here. You took the helm in a challenging time in our city, and you navigated the council back to order and calm that has allowed the work of the city to move forward. And let me just say, that's an understatement. <laughs> While this is your last State of the City speech as a member of the council, we know that your legacy in this chamber will continue long after you have left it. So on behalf of the city of Los Angeles, its residents, and from me personally, thank you, Mr. President. Please stand. We have much respect for you 
And let me just say, Los Angeles, we have a long way to go. But let me say here, right at the beginning, the state of our city is stronger today because we have made change and we have disrupted the status quo. <laughs> Over the last year, we have done big things together. Thousands more unhoused Angelinos came inside and homicide and violent crime came down last year. We weathered Tropical Storm Hillary, and we rebuilt the 10 freeway in 10 days. <laughs> Supervisor Mitchell, she agrees with that. <laughs> and most importantly, we are turning away from the status quo. We are looking forward and making change, and we have changed how Los Angeles works so the city works better for the people of Los Angeles, and we're just getting started. Last month, our city delegation was in Paris to see the lead to, that, to the summer 2024 Olympic Games in Paris because in just four short years, we will host the 2028 Olympic and Paralympic Games right here. Millions of people, just think about this, millions of people from more than 200 countries speaking hundreds of languages will come for one of the largest gatherings in the world. So imagine this, it will be like hosting seven Super Bowls a day for 17 straight days. Can you imagine that? That's a little overwhelming to think about. And we can't forget the World Cup is coming to Inglewood in LA in just two years, in 2026. But the time will fly by quickly, and the question for us is, will we be ready? Will Los Angeles be ready? I say the answer is yes. Los Angeles will be ready. We will be ready for the world. <laughs> and we all know that the games are a massive endeavor. Transportation, security, business, housing, sustainability, and so much more. But we have to zoom out for a minute and realize that the Olympics are about opportunity, and that opportunity begins now. The games will mean more than five million visitors pumping billions of dollars into our economy, staying in our hotels, eating in our restaurants, visiting our museums, and exploring our neighborhoods. Now, my administration will create a focused initiative to make sure that the games will mean hundreds of small businesses winning contracts and hiring Angelinos. But the last thing, well, that's right, Hiring Angelinos and new businesses. <laughs> but the lasting 21st century impact of these games are the billions of media impressions, streaming minutes, and clicks. And those will cause billions of new and lasting opinions about LA. Opinions that will either reflect a land of opportunity and beauty, where people should visit and invest, are a city that, at best, is just getting by on its past glory. So what is the city that we will showcase to the world? It's the new Los Angeles that we're building together. I want the world to see all levels of government joining forces, locking arms, and actually working together. Now, sadly, over the years, LA has become known for dysfunction. Dysfunction within City Hall and dysfunction between the city and the county. But we are turning the page because the city, the county, the state, and the federal government, instead of casting blame, we are working together to actually solve problems. We are working for the people. We want the world to see that Los Angeles is now number two transit city in the country because riders are seeing that we are changing Metro's approach to safety, cleanliness, and customer service. We are increasing service and leading the nation in building out our network. This past year, Metro accomplished what commuters have dreamed of for years, a regional connector 
in the heart of our city that links every corner of our region and bursting with the promise of what's possible as we expand public transportation in Los Angeles. In South LA, East LA, in the Valley, and in Mid Wilshire, we see Angelinos working hard and earning good wages while creating infrastructure that will last generations. Infrastructure that will help Angelinos close the gap between an affordable neighborhood and a good job, getting to work on time, and breathing cleaner air. Our Metro work is eliminating pollution and addressing climate change. We are doing the same at LAX with the coming transit connection there and by eliminating plastics. And we are seeing a cleaner and greener America's port. The port of Los Angeles where just last month I was joined by the EPA administrator to announce new federal investments in zero emissions equipment and infrastructure and other initiatives to address climate change and public health. I'm proud to continue Los Angeles' global leadership on, on climate change. And to advance our work, I'm announcing a new climate cabinet, new climate plans at key city departments, stakeholder engagement, and action on climate justice to make sure that our city continues to lead. And that includes making sure that Los Angeles is 100% clean energy by 2035. Last year, I told you Los Angeles was open for business. This year, we can say that businesses are coming back. In December, I joined Councilwoman Park in her district to announce that the Bank of California, the third largest bank in the state, is moving its headquarters to the west side from Orange County. Now, along with jobs and investment, they brought a million dollar check to support our program to help small and medium sized businesses win government contracts. For too long, Los Angeles City Hall has not effectively supported businesses and jobs. My administration is making sure that City Hall is a partner in economic success. That's why when the alfresco outdoor dining, you all remember that, was facing elimination, we acted to make it permanent. It's a new streamlined model. It's a streamlined model for how the city should facilitate business growth. And we're continuing to see the benefits of my executive directive to make businesses boom, doubling permit help for business owners, accelerating our restaurant and small business express program a new walk-in counter in Van Nuys for street vendors and same-day sanitation inspection times. Council has been a key partner in this progress and we will continue to act for businesses, especially downtown, on exciting new initiatives like the potential modernization of the convention center to attract tourists and business travelers We want them to fill our restaurants, our arenas, and to support jobs in downtown and beyond for decades to come. My top priority, of course, is the health, well-being, and safety in the lives of the four million Angelinos who live in our city. And of course, that includes our first responders who keep us safe. As the council president mentioned just this morning, we were tragically reminded of the sacred debt we owe to our first responders. Earlier this morning, I met with the family of Jacob Fuerte, the fire recruit who passed away. His father is an active duty firefighter. My heart goes out to the family during this difficult time, and I've ordered city flags to be flown at half staff in Jacob's honor. And today, I thank all first responders. I thank our chief of police, Choi, our fire chief, 
Kristen Crowley. Thank you so much for your service. And Freddy Escobar, who leads the workers. We see the skill and innovation of our fire department every day, whether it's breaking new ground on response vehicles or their incredible response to the historic storms and the 10 freeway inferno. Whatever comes our way, I know that they'll be ready. <laughs> Supporting our sworn personnel is deeply important to me and the status quo can simply not protect Angelinos, so we're acting to change it. Amidst a national and local police hiring and retention crisis, together with the council, we forged a new contract specifically designed to reduce the downward trend in officers. As a result, we're attracting record numbers of applicants to the police academy, and my budget for next year maintains our LAPD staffing goals. We are sending a signal to our current officers and our community partners that we support them, that public safety is a priority for this administration. And part of supporting them and the communities we all serve is to expand our approach to public safety in Los Angeles with our Mayor's Office of Community Safety that focuses on preventing crime and interrupting the cycles of violence. To accomplish this, we have strengthened our gang prevention and community violence intervention programs and summer night lights, and we've expanded the Circle Mental Health Response Program to move neighborhoods throughout the city. And we must recognize, thank you. And we must recognize the many factors that go into community safety. For example, street lights, Councilman De Leon is leading the effort to stop copper wire theft. Copper Woman, uh, Councilwoman Padilla has a solution installing solar street lights so that we don't have to worry about the copper theft. We have focused on change and strategic investments, and as a result, violent crime and homicides were down in 2023. But we all know that these cycles can reverse, so the search for the next LAPD chief is critical. And this isn't the closed door conversation. I've been meeting with officers, business organizations, community leaders, community members to ask them directly what they want to see in the next chief. My number one job, period, is to keep Angelino safe, and that's what we will do, and that's what we will do together. Now, a key to public safety and public health is how we approach the tragedy of 46,000 unhoused Angelinos. Now, I refuse to hide the fact that it's 46,000 people. Now, we will not hide people, but what we will do is house people. For too long, Angelinos have been failed by quick fixes and unhoused people just being shuffled around. Angelinos deserve real solutions, and that means a sea change in the way LA approaches homelessness. This means committing to the goal of preventing and ending homelessness. Not hiding, not managing, but ending homelessness. We will end homelessness with a new strategy and a new system that urgently lifts people from the street and that surrounds them with the support and housing that they need to never go back to the streets. Mm -hmm. 
We have disrupted the status quo on day one of my administration by declaring a state of emergency because the crisis on our streets is nothing less than a disaster. And I want to thank City Attorney Heidi Feldstein Soto for navigating, for helping us navigate our way path forward. <clears throat> And when a disaster strikes, the initial phase is to rescue people. And Inside Safe has been rescuing Angelinos from the streets and offering immediate stability and shelter. <laughs> Inside Safe is our proactive rejection of a status quo that left unhoused Angelinos to wait and die outside in encampments until permanent housing was built. We have joined forces working with every council member, our county partners and our partners at the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, led by Dr. Valicia adams Kellum. Together with the Board of Supervisors and the City Council, we have housed Angelinos in 47 different neighborhoods. Mm. As a result, the sidewalk around Larchmont School on Selma is open again for families to walk to school. And the sidewalk no longer serves as someone's home because of our work with Councilman Soto Martinez. We worked with Councilwoman Hutt and Councilwoman Yaroslawski to house people sleeping in the RFK Park in Koreatown and Poinsettia Park in Fairfax. <laughs> We've moved Angelinos living around grocery stores in South Los Angeles into interim housing with Council President Pro Tem Harris Dawson. And there are no longer 50 people living around the Chatsworth Metro stop, thanks to work done with Councilman Lee. <laughs> we're moving Angelinos inside, who were living under the 210 freeway in Shadow Hills and above the 110 freeway in South Central, thanks to our work with Councilwoman Rodriguez and Council Member Price. I want you to think about this for a minute. Think of the toll on the parents, the siblings, and the friends of the unhoused who each night go to sleep dreading that phone call from the hospital or from the morgue. We all know that inside is always healthier than outside. And let me ask, if you're now living inside because of Inside Safe, if you're one of the providers taking care of Angelinos inside, and if your neighborhood or business has improved because of Inside Safe, please stand. Now the rescue phase of an emergency is always expensive. There's no way around it. Motel rooms rented by the night are expensive, but it is far, far more expensive to leave people unhoused on our streets. Beyond the human toll, we all pay the cost of the thousands and thousands of fire, paramedic, and police calls, the cost of each overdose, of each emergency room visit, of each night in county jail, each of which is a human tragedy. The cost to shops and restaurants whose customers stay away out of fear. The cost when tourists don't come to visit. The cost when offices and their employees leave downtown. I just will not accept this and our city can't afford to accept it.
That is why we are disrupting, challenging, and rebuilding a system. Inside SAFE and our overall approach is evolving, and it'll continue to evolve. After the rescue phase comes the recovery phase. Lessons learned during the rescue phase can be applied, and we can think and plan for the longer term. The emergency doesn't end. It just enters a different phase. So right now, we're working to move past nightly room rentals, including by master leasing and purchasing motels and hotels and already built permanent housing. Now, we are asking the most fortunate Angelinos to participate in this effort with personal, private sector, and philanthropic funds to help us acquire more properties, lower the cost of capital, and speed up housing. This is the mission of our new capital campaign, LA for LA. We have brought the public sector together, and now we must prevail on the humanity and generosity of the private sector. LA for LA can be a sea change for Los Angeles, an unprecedented partnership to confront this emergency, an example of disrupting the status quo to build a new system to save lives. We are also improving the delivery of services that people need to permanently stay off the streets, addressing mental health, addiction, and chronic disease. That's why we have ushered in another big change, appointing a medical doctor and public health professional, the city's first ever deputy mayor for homelessness and community health, Dr. Agonifer. <laughs> we are standing up to the city's capacity to address RVs and not just tents, finally. For years, there was simply no city system towing, storage, and safe parking to address this part of the crisis. So the crisis grew and grew, and this is a prime example of the status quo that we are leaving behind. Much more needs to be done, and just last week, we worked with Councilman McCosker in operation that removed in Wilmington that removed 30 Angelinos inside and got RVs off the street. Before that, <laughs> before that, we partnered with Councilwoman Rahman to get RVs along Forest Lawn Drive, 50 RVs off the street and the individuals housed. Getting Angelinos off the street and interim housing is our new strategy, and from there we need permanent housing. And my executive directive one has cut the city process from six months to 35 days. <laughs> this has resulted in more than 16,000 additional new affordable housing units in the pipeline. We must also prevent people from falling into homelessness. Now, I will not ignore this critical element, but I have to tell you that no city in America that I know of has a comprehensive strategy to prevent homelessness. So through the Mayor's Fund for Los Angeles, we have not only provided emergency assistance for over 32,000 Angelinos at risk of losing their homes, but along with the new tenant protections enacted by council, we are creating a prevention model for Los Angeles and beyond. <laughs> All together, our efforts made it, so we brought in a record number of Angelinos inside last year, thousands more than the year before, and we will continue with urgency. It's no secret we're entering a tough budget year. It's not just us, though. Other cities are confronting rising costs and lower revenues. 
and Sacramento is anticipating major cuts. Here in Los Angeles, I will propose my budget for the next fiscal year. It breaks away from the budgeting of the past, starting by eliminating long-standing vacant positions. For years, the city has funded thousands of vacant positions. And last year, I called on Angelinos to come to work for the city. You remember that? I said, everybody come work for the city. <laughs> Oops, no. <laughs> Actually, I have to tell you, 3,500 Angelinos answered that call. Thirty five hundred new workers we have welcomed to the city family and we've seen the difference. A hundred thousand more calls to three one one were answered. With all of that, we can't forget our animals. We've brought in a new leader of the city department. We've nearly doubled the number of volunteers. We're extending hours into the evening. And earlier today, I was proud to sign Councilwoman Hernandez's moratorium on dog breeding permits in Los Angeles. Thank you for your leadership. Now, Vacant positions do not fill potholes, sweep streets, or staff parks. And too many of these vacant positions have been there for years and years because of flawed budgeting that does not reflect how departments should actually operate. So this year we will eliminate these ghost positions while we preserve core services. Now we will continue to hire, but we will hire strategically based on real life. We can make real change with good policy and good smart policy, but carrying thousands of vacant positions on the books simply because they were the, there the year before, I want to end that. Looking ahead, we will use the elimination of these vacancies to set the stage for future budgets to be based on actual service delivery. To determine this, I am directing my office to conduct a comprehensive analysis of all city departments. We will begin preparing for next year's budget immediately after this year's budget is signed so we can take advantage of the tough times to determine how departments can function in a more efficient and effective manner. And I know that under the steadfast leadership of our budget chair, Bob Blumenfeld, we can get this done. This will result in better services for Angelinos in the good years and in the tough years that we expect to experience in the near future. My goal is to change the way LA budgets so that it is honest, transparent, and squarely focused on doing a better job for Angelinos. Now we all know that over the years, Los Angeles has become less and less affordable for working people. City workers are no different, and I want to thank Controller Mejia because he brought to our attention that two-thirds of city employees can't even live in Los Angeles because it's not affordable. And I know that the people behind me and everyone in these chambers supports working people, all working people, regardless of their occupation. We want to attract and retain committed, driven, skilled, and career-oriented employees. And I'm aware of city workers, I have heard of city workers who help us bring homeless people inside who they themselves are on the verge of being on the streets. If we want to house people, if we want to keep our cities safe, if we want to fix our streets, we must pay our workers fairly. This is the path forward, putting skilled and long-term city workers over empty desk and using this year as a reset for our budget so that our budgets moving forward rest 
on a foundation of reality. Locking arms doesn't mean we always agree, but how we handle differences and conflicts is key. Are we focused on outcomes? Are we focused on the people's business? Are we addressing differences in person? Or are we going to resort to Twitter wars? I know that we are better than that. Look at the dysfunction in Washington. I know that. <laughs> Look at City Hall in the past. Our work is about leaving that old way in the dust. No more running away from our problems. No more papering over our problems. We are focused on solving problems and making progress. <laughs> now everyone on a personal note, three weeks ago I welcomed my third grandchild. <laughs> His name is Oliver, and actually, many members of my family are here, so will you please stand up, members of the family? <laughs> That's Oliver's mother right there. <laughs> Oliver's actually in my office. <laughs> and while I've spoken tonight about the four million Angelinos I work for every day, a huge part of my heart is with him and my other grandchildren right now. And I know City Hall can do big, bold things for LA, for today, and for the future that my grandchildren will inherit. Thousands more people moved inside. We've lowered crime. Think about it. We've weathered a tropical storm and an earthquake on the same day. <laughs> I just won't ever accept that we have to settle for the way things have always been. And if we keep challenging the status quo through the budget and across the board, we will make sure that Los Angeles is a city that puts the people's business first, that puts results first, and builds a new Los Angeles that we can all, all be proud of. Thank you, Los Angeles. Thank you.